Welcome to Tripoli, Lebanon. In this documentary, I'm taking you deep into Lebanon's second largest city. It dates back to the 14th century BC, so there's plenty of history, but we're here to explore its food culture. From mountains of mouth-watering Lebanese sweets, to incredible street food, to the most delicious grilled chicken on this side of the Mediterranean, get ready for your mouth to water. Don't forget the tarator, it's amazing. But it has so much garlic that no one will want to kiss you afterwards. Trust me. Enough said. Let's go to Tripoli, Lebanon. Good afternoon, everyone. This is David Hoffman from David's Bin here, coming at you from the beautiful historical coastal town of Junyan, Lebanon, about a 30 minute drive north of Beirut. Today, we're going to explore the old souk. We're going to eat lots of delicious food. At the very end, we're going to take a cable car to the top to Harissa to see the Lady of Lebanon. So, Armando, how do we start today? David, let's go eat. Malikato, one of the best sandwich places here in, uh, in Junia. Sandwiches? Yeah, sandwiches right here. Malik al Tahu. Malik al Tahu. Malik is, is basically a king. It's Arabic for a king. Malik al Tahu, Tahu is grilled chicken. Alright, let's go outside. Oh my god, that's a line, huh? Yeah, that's a line. Oh, nice. So they're literally right in front of you, right there. Right in front of you. You get, the, you get your sandwiches from there. And they have nice seating. So, yeah. A big size or a small size? Small. Small? Yeah. Medium? medium? Okay, medium. Uh, one uh, medium. Do you want to have something for a drink? No, no, just one. No, no, not nothing. How much is it? 60,000, which is like $3. Okay, like so besides the tawuk, they also have burgers, right? So we got burgers, tawuk, fries, and that's it, right? That's like yeah. basically the outside. Yeah, basically, yeah. But the, the, the most, they're most famous for the tawuk sandwich, which is amazing. Oh. It's chicken chops, grilled, with uh, garlic paste and uh, potatoes and pickles. It's amazing. And that's coleslaw, right? And, and coleslaw, yeah. Okay, so it's a good mix. I like the, the sauces. They look like it's going to be like a red one, there's a white one, that's garlic, I'm true, sure. True, true. And then tawuk, as you can see in the back. So it's basically chopped up chicken chunks, true, right, true. on the grill. Yes. Just keep moving them around, right? And then they also have hot dog over there, I see. Yeah, French fritters and hot dogs. Okay. Yeah. Nice, and we just lost power. <laughs> but it's all good. Unfortunately. It's all good. Everything's still hot. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Here, and this is the Adauk sandwich. Beautiful, look at this. Big. This is the small one, right? The medium? This is the medium size, yeah. Oh my god, it's massive. Huge. Basically, it's a mix of cabbage, chicken, some sauces, tomato, pickle as well, right? Mmm. Oh wow. You like it? Mm hmm I love the crunch, the coleslaw. Nice chicken. Great marinade. Yeah. You know like a I wouldn't say hot sauce, it's like a almost like a sweet and sour. Somehow. And then the garlic, right? The garlic paste? Yeah. Mm hmm Mmm. -hmm. I love the pita. Wow, the pita is nice, crispy, not too thick. You see? Pretty thin. Look at that. Let's open it up. Beautiful. Oh, and you have french fries. I won't lie, I've been eating all day, but I can eat more for this. Mmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Even the french fries aren't too crispy. They're so soft. The pickle, too. Nice crunch. Yeah. So many different flavors in here. Wow. Good. You know what it most reminds me of? Like, uh, I wouldn't say exactly like a Greek gyro. Obviously, the inside, the, the protein is different. This is chicken, chicken chunks, right? But very similar. Mm. 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 How many eating this whole thing, bro? <laughs> a plus fast food. A plus. This is really famous in Lebanon. Like, Every, to, every time you, you crave something, you want to eat something, even in the middle of the night, you just go to Malik Atau and ask for a Atau sandwich. Everything's falling out of it, so I'm going to just go in here and grab some of the chunks of chicken. Mmm. Another marinade. Nice and soft. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Oh, and the fries with this. Dude, this is amazing. So this is what people have after they party, right? After yeah. you party, yeah. you have this as a late night snack. Oh. I'm full. Let's keep going. Dude, I need a coffee. Yeah, 
Yeah. Like right now. Coffee. Like right now. It's like 2 p.m. right now. We just got out of the mountains. It's crazy. It was snow up there, freezing. It was like zero, like literally freezing. 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're down here and it's cool. It's like, yeah, it's 13. 13? Yeah. That's perfect. Perfect yeah, weather. Perfect weather. So just coffee, maybe some ice cream, maybe some more food. Yeah. <laughs> you can't, huh? We're not stopping food. We're not stopping food. Oh, yeah. Here we're not away. So right here in the center of town, we have a lot of shops. Unfortunately, because it's Sunday, most of them are closed. I don't know, maybe it's like siesta time, you know? Could be, could be, yeah. Could be, right? Oh, so we have one like tall building and all these are really, really old. So you see like brick, sandstone buildings, yeah. all two stories. And these are residential on top, commercial on the bottom. True. And it's basically a lot of shops, right? Lots yeah. of shops. Fashion shops, shoes, accessories, lingerie, everything. Finally, we found some access to the beach. <laughs> oh my gosh. We were walking around for like half an hour trying to get to the beach, but every single entrance was gated was off. Gated off, yeah. Crazy. And we have some fishermen here? Yeah. Cool. Wow, so many buildings here. Wow, check it out. Check Look at that out. view. Check it out. Incredible view. Bonjour. Anna, bonjour. Bonjour. Yeah, take bonjour. A Anna. If you want to get an incredible view of the coastline, come out here to the water. Look at this, the mountain, the city, the fishermen, just locals, right? Yeah, they just came out for fishing and uh, have, fun, have some fun by the, by the beach. And then we'll, we're going up all the way to Our Lady of Lebanon, to Harissa. Okay. Uh, we're gonna take the cable car. Okay. So that's gonna be interesting. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, and that's basically it here, right? Yeah, yeah. So if you wanna get good views, you know, the Mediterranean Sea, right over there. All right, let's get back in the car and let's go. Let's hit the road. Straight up. Oh, yeah. Let's go to the cable car. Yeah. Here, we gotta hurry up, because it's already like, what, 3.30? Uh, 3.15. 3.15, the sun sets here at 5, but as you can see, it's already getting very gloomy. Yeah. Oh, we gotta hurry up. So after five minute drive, we made it here to the Teleperic. So funicular, right? So small funicular. Basically a two-seater. It cost us 8K to park. So whatever that is. Very, very cheap. Yeah, very Very, cheap. very affordable. All right, let's go. Let's, let's beat this bus. Cost 25 per person round trip. Roughly one US dollar. Something like that. This is the least expensive funicular I've ever been on in my life. <laughs> Dude, I've, I've paid like $50 once. No way. Yeah, in like some crazy countries. Oh my like God. Japan or something. <laughs> Here we go. Nice. Tiny. Whoa. Two-seater. It's oh, only yeah. a two-seater. Ready, dude? Whoa. <laughs> crazy. I love this. The last one I went on was in Batumi, in Batumi, Georgia, and that was a four-seater. A little bigger. Right little, yeah, it was a little bigger. Oh my God. <laughs> Look at this views. Mm -hmm. Woo. And the buildings are so close. Look how close that building was. Wow. So they're very, very small, right? Two seaters. I think you can fit multiple people. Yeah, you can fit like a four people, right? Yeah. Not Easily. so bad. Easily. Not so bad. We're basically over the highway. And this connects Beirut to Tripoli. No, it's con the, the highway. Yeah. yeah, the highway connects Beirut to Tripoli. Yeah, exactly. Dude, super high. How high is Herisa? Uh, I think it's around 500 meters above sea level, yeah, 500. That was pretty quick, right? Yeah. That was like what? Five minutes? Around five, five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! -hoo. So what do we do here? Just get a view? We roam around. We go up to the statue of the Lady of Lebanon. Perfect. Let's go out. Thank you. This is our stop here. We're gonna go up to uh, the statue of the, Our Lady of Harissa. And then maybe roam around, set a look at the view. As soon as you get out of the station, you have incredible views overlooking the town. Wow, beautiful. And it is the best time to come, right? Right before sunset, golden hour. Ooh, it's getting a little nippy now. Literally just drop like 10 degrees. <laughs> Bring your jacket in January. Woo, nice hike. Beautiful hike. Thank God I'm in shape. <laughs> I'm walking off that, that incredible sandwich. <laughs> so FYI, you can drive here. If you want to drive, See, here's the parking for anybody coming up by car. But obviously the experience is the cable car. Exactly. Oh, and there it is. So, how high is it? The statue basically is 8.5 meters high, and it has a diameter of 5 meters, and it's all made of bronze. But they uh, painted it white. Fortunately, because of COVID, we cannot go up to the top of the lady. It sort of sucks, but it's okay. We can go to the chapel, right? Yes, yeah. All right, let's go, go inside. Mask on. Just so you guys know, when you go inside, be respectful. Everybody in there is praying. So go in, make a prayer, and that's it. 
right? Yeah. And from here we get views, right? Yeah, let's see. Okay. It's the view over Junier Bay and it's beautiful with the sunset right now. It's golden hour. Okay, David, so uh, this is where we light candles here and there's no specific cost for the candles. You just uh, donate whatever you want and we light your candle. <laughs> These are our candles. So usually, you know, when I go into a church, I always light one of these for my grandmother. Here we go. Yeah, so the way you do this is that you literally have to melt wax so you can place it better, right? Just like that. That's the basilica. Usually people who visit the Harissa go in and pray. It's a very nice place, very quiet, very peaceful. Instead of walking all the way down, they also have a free ride and it's like a smaller funicular, yeah. right? Yeah. It looks a little different, like a weird shape. We're gonna ride it down to the main spot and then from there get the cable car all the way down. Oh cool, look at this. It's like, yeah. a, it's like a mini bus. Yeah. <laughs> this thing shakes a lot. It's a bumpy ride. <laughs> it is a bumpy ride for one minute. <laughs> it's a creaky ride, it's a bumpy ride, but it's good. It's, it's got some, some nice views. Merci, merci. Bienvenue. Very big line. Oh. All those people going back down. That's too much. Yeah, because it is sunset, everybody's leaving. There's easily 200 people on this line. It's yeah. gonna take at least 20 minutes to get out of here. Yeah. It's okay, we have time. Okay, so we skipped this spot. Just <laughs> there with them. So they need oh, to okay, together. okay. I was like, what just happened here? No, no. Crazy. All right, so the way he releases it is he pulls this latch, right? Sure. Yeah. Cool. Can we go next? Yeah, we got Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Guy's wild! Whoa! Woo! The guy let somebody else skip us and then another person skipped us, but it was cool. We got in, yeah. we're back in the little funicular, and look at the view. Golden hour, beautiful, and that's it, right? We saw the town, we had, what's the name of the sandwich place? Which one? The sandwich? Ma Ma Malik yeah. al Malik al Ta'u. Malik al Ta'u. Malik al Ta'u. Yeah. Really delicious. I mean, yeah. what a chicken, garlicky, I mean, just a combination with the, with of flavors, the and the with the pickles, pickles, pita, I mean, awesome, awesome street food. You have to try that. It's not just here, it's all over uh, Lebanon, right? Yeah, they have, a it's a chain. They have branches all over Lebanon, and they have really good sandwiches and burgers. Yeah. And then after that, we explored the town, and then we made our way up through the cable car to the Lady of Lebanon. What a beautiful sight. From there, you get awesome views of the bay, right, the town. And that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below, subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. We'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Lebanon. Let's go. Good morning guys, David Hoffman here from David's Been Here coming at you from beautiful Biblos, Lebanon. One of the oldest continuously inhabited cities on planet Earth. It's been inhabited since the 5th millennia BC and today what we're going to do is we're going to eat lots of delicious food, we're going to see historical attractions, and my man, what are we doing? We're starting off with a knefe with a twist. Here they make it inside the croissant chocolate. They add the knefe inside of it. Let's start the, the right way, and then we see Biblos. And so this place is called La Belle d'Or. La Belle d'Or. La Belle d'Or. Okay. The bee, the honey bee. The honey bee? Do they have honey? I'm sure they do. Yeah, of course. <laughs> hello, hello. Okay, so you open the croissant, Charlie croissant. Yes. You put yeah. the canefe. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. So it's cheese. She's going to add chocolate sauce. Nick, if you put the same in the Oh, it's like a complete chocolate overload. Yeah, instead of syrup, they add chocolate. Chocolate overload right there. So the total price was 65, so yeah. that's uh, roughly right now. $3. $3. Yeah. Awesome. So, Kenefe. Chocolate. The best. Croissant. Chocolate croissant Kenefe. Crazy. I'm excited. Where can we sit? Over here somewhere? Oh my god, look at this, guys. I haven't had a croissant like this in my life. So we have the Kenefe inside. So, Samalina dough, avocado cheese, nice crust. And instead of putting like rose syrup on it, they added chocolate. So, if I open it up, you can see. It's an overload right there. Oh my gosh. What are they doing to me? Look at this, my friends. Mm -hmm. It's time for breakfast. This is, so this is here, right? This place in Biblos. Oh my God. Mmm. Mmm. A cheese, a chocolate. Mmm. 
the crust and the flaky croissant. Probably the most decadent breakfast of all time. The combination's unreal. Dude, it's the best canefe. The best canefe. Oh, I'm gonna eat this whole thing. And you know, it's not just a canefe. The croissant's delicious. Look at this, nice and flaky. Lots of layers. Canefe just literally oozes out. Look at that cheese. Just so you guys know, this is like a 2,500 calorie breakfast. And it was the first meal of the day. I'll have one more bite. I wasn't expecting this this morning. Wow. My kids would love this, bro. Mm. Oh. And if you want, you can just get canepe. You can get other sweets. They have a lot of other stuff here. Great place to start off your day. Mm -hmm. 9.30 in the morning right now. Perfect. Oh my gosh, guys. They are too nice. They just gave me another canepe. What a great place. Definitely come here, try the canepe with the char croissant, or you can get it with canafe. From that filling breakfast, we're off to see the old souk. It's right here, the old souks. One of the oldest souks in Lebanon, still preserved. The cobblestones are still from old times. Frames, the doors. At night, they turn into a huge club. Like all the bars fill up with one type of music. It's great to party at night and great to walk and shop by day. Amazing, so you should definitely come here on the weekend. Today is uh, today is Friday, but we're gonna be in Batroun tonight, so we're yeah. not gonna be here. And uh, we're gonna eat some more food out here some, somewhere, right? Yeah, we're gonna have something on the way. We, we got a small pomegranate juice. Has many health benefits. Pomegranate gives you good metabolism. So a small juice shop, they have all these juices, right? Orange, carrots, pineapples, pomegranates, strawberries, mangoes. They also have desserts. So if you want, you can get some sweets here. But we're just gonna get something very light, a juice. Oh, I need something to wake me up, man. Yeah. I also need a coffee at some point. At some point, yeah, you will have. At some point. Pomegranate juice, my favorite. Watch this, you ready? Oh, it's so good, you want some? I'm good. You're good? Mm, it's a little sour, but it's perfect. I mean, for me, this carrot juice just flushes out the system, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, that was amazing, bro. Thank you. So, how much do I owe you? Special one. Special one? 30, 30 for this, right? Yes. So the reason we came early to Biblos is because we're headed to Batrun and then to Tripoli. So this was our first stop. But if you want to, you can spend a whole day here exploring, right? All right, so what do we have next over here? We're going now to the ancient ruins where we can see the old crusader fort. We can see some uh, Byzantine uh, ruins and some old uh, theaters, maybe Roman theaters. I mean, this is the entrance to the souk right from this side. So it's one of the gates. They used to have many gates. It's not like now we have roads and uh, they used to have specific gates. And it's starting to rain, guys. So we're just going to have to like run around here and see what we can get in this uh, muggy, wet day. So it's 8 tau entrance for foreign and 5 tau for Lebanese, which is 20 cents. Maybe. So guys, we have to wear a mask in here. It's a, a rule. Ooh. We have many, many sites. We have the mosque here from the Mameluk period. You have the uh, Crusader Fort, typical Crusade architecture. You see the rounds. That's what they used to do. The Roman columns here, the old Byzantine houses. So this is the entrance to the Crusader Fort right here. Massive structure. Beneath it, you have all the old houses. It's just basically ruins, right? Ruins over here, ruins over here, pillars over there. And see the Mediterranean Sea right there. When they excavate, they used to put like a big cart on, a, on, the, on the rails so they can uh, take out the stuff faster to excavate and make it clean. So in every excavation of old Roman site in Lebanon we have these rails and the carts, you can see the cart here, you just take out the stuff they were excavating that they don't need. So I haven't been to a Crusader Fort before, it's my first one. Uh, it's very similar to a lot of the fortresses I've seen from the medieval ages, right? You know, really, really high ceilings. As you can see some nice arches, super thick walls. This, right? And over here, look at this. The bricks get thicker and thicker. Wow, it's huge right there. And around the fortress, you can see this is the defense tower, right? This is where they would shoot with the arrows. Oh, wow, look at that. This is the well. They dug like a spiral kind of walkway so they can reach it go down another 50 meters they used to bring water for the village here 
beautiful well. It's an ancient well, right? Right next to it, we have these massive walls. Behind us, we have the fortress. I mean, on a great day, sunny day, this site would be incredible to explore. Unfortunately for us, it is really wet, but you know what? You can control the things you can control, and don't try to control the things you can't control. I think this is how the saying goes, but it's fine, you know? God has a reason for everything. Then we're gonna escape this rain and go find some kake. Kake. Whew, let's go. So we're going next, Nico. Here, there's an interesting shop in the souks. It's Memoir du Temps. They sell millions of years old uh, fossils. They find them here, you can see, in the mountains of uh, Biblos, in the mountains, because they moved from underneath the ocean towards the mountains with time. So the dead fish make fossils, and you can here buy a nice collection of fossils. You have plenty. Well, I've never seen this before. Incredible. So they have two sections to this place. They have the museum, and then they have the ones for sale. So over here, a vendre. So that means for sale, and this is the museum. Wow, look at that. Dude, yeah, crazy. Very beautiful fish. So this is the fish that has been cemented millions of years ago. 100 million years. 100 million years ago. Yes, so I can give you a brief explanation. Yeah. All right, so we find all of these fish fossils in the mountain of Biblos at 800 meters above the sea level. They all have same age, 100 million years. Uh, Lebanon is the only place in the whole Middle East where you can find these fish fossils. This one. So we have to uncover it to see the fish perfectly to remove the sediments. And sure, 80% of the species doesn't exist anymore. Here, for example, you can see a fish who had swallowed another one. It's another fish. You see the other fish is swallowed. Yes. That's crazy. And so this is just a museum, and the, and what do the prices start at here? Mm -hmm. No, the the prices for the uh, ones for sale. I start from one dollar My friend, thank you so much. You're welcome. Appreciate Have a nice day. It. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. All right, guys, we had to beat the rain, so we came to this restaurant, Phoenicia, Phoenicia, right? So like Phoenicians, right? So it's like a wooden tavern-style restaurant, beautiful bar, and I love their presentation. We looked online to see how they present their food, and it looks incredible. They're gonna hang, you know, a plate from the top. We're gonna have some skewers, and in front of us we have, you know, a small mezet. We have a small sage uh, oven where you can put some sage bread and uh, heat them, some zaatar zeit or thyme and oil, some labne, the yogurt, and some olives. So you get some of the labne, right? Let's put it all over. Mm, this one's like nice and thick, right? Mm -hmm. So it's basically a tiny pita bread, the saj, the zaatar, labne. Roll it up just like that. Super nice and crispy, light. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. So fresh, love it. Okay, wow. Nico, amazing. Yeah. So sausage, I'm just gonna dive onto one sausage really fast. This is absolutely phenomenal, I love the presentation. Mm. Mm. With the pomegranate and nasi. Mmm. Oh, I'm gonna try everything really fast. Potatoes. Mm hmm. Mmm. Nice crispy potatoes. Cool. A little spicy. Over here we have kidney, right? Or liver? Chicken liver. Chicken liver. Mm hmm. I'm sorry, man. It's delicious. Sweet. Everything that has pomegranate molasses. Mmm. And this one is just like, um, just beef? Small beef. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. My favorite chicken liver. So we just went with super hot plates, right? Everything's very meaty. So right here, this is like a sick kebab, basically, right? So good. Mm hmm. So I have to dip it right here. Mm -hmm. Just like that, to the hummus. And under it they have some tabbouleh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love the hummus. Very fresh. And right next to it we have garlic, right? Mm -hmm. Love it, man. Coleslaw. Mm. 
is amazing. So they're cooking it on this, right? So you have a little bit of charcoal and you have the three skewers. So you just keep you know, rotating, then you cook. So this one's chicken, this one's beef, and this one's vegetables. This is amazing. What an experience. Guys, I gotta say, this is my favorite. Oh man, the chicken liver. Mm. Then potato, some garlic. So good. And over here, we have chicken. This is also chicken sausage, right? Small one. Meat, meat sausage. Meat sausage. And then here we have like a pomegranate, I guess chutney, like a little sauce. And barbecue. Mmm, barbecue. Mmm. Oh, I love the barbecue. Some meat. Some meat. meat. Lots of food or head of bird. Because they look like a bird head. Bird it's head? Small. Yeah. No, they're not bird heads. They're meat. I know. Like looking like. I know. They chopped it up in little dices, right? Yeah. It's really good with this. So this is like a mayo, but a little garlicky. This is the pure garlic. Mm. My favorite's right here. And mix it in with the garlic. Yeah. So good. I gotta say, one of the coolest experiences ever. Having it being hung, like hung right here with the chain. Hey, that's cool. Dude, I don't even know. I'm so happy right now. So what do we have here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what's your name? George. George. Yes. So that's Arak right there. Yeah, this one Arak. Okay, why not, dude? Cheers. This is how the hospitality is here in, in Lebanon. You guys are too nice, man. <laughs> too nice. <laughs> oh, so good. And this is house Arak, right? Yes. Housemade, yeah. perfect, super smooth, very light. So it's anise and it's grapes, yes, right? Yes, grape juice. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> hey, cheers, cheers. And you're right. Oh, too good, too good. I would have more, man, but I can't. <laughs> okay, this is a dessert. Okay, uh, the flavor is a mint with sus chocolate and nuts, and uh, this is uh, like a spoon. Okay, for a good. Uh, Flavor. Flavor. Okay. Oh, see it right there. Uh, it's a cinnamon stick, right? Mm -hmm. Or it's bark. Yes. Erfe. The total price is seven hundred thousand, which is thirty-five U.S. dollars. I think it's a deal. And that, my friends, is Biblos. Incredible old town, beautiful place. What did we do in Biblos? We had some magnificent with croissant. We had some uh, Lebanese food served in a nice way. Mm -hmm. We had some juice. So the old town, beautiful place. Beautiful place. Well, guys, now you know it's only about a 45-minute drive north of Beirut. Yep. If you're in Lebanon, you have to go visit. Definitely recommend it in the summer months. Way better. You can hit up the beach, relax, and get a lot of sun, right? That was the biggest issue today. And now it's sunny, but unfortunately for us, we're headed to Batroun, and we'll see you in a bit. Guys, if you love the video, please give us a thumbs up. Leave us a comment below. Subscribe to our channel for more awesome travel. <laughs> <laughs> our channel guys if, so I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give me a thumbs up leave me a comment below subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content we'll see you in the next travel food adventure somewhere in Batroun let's go Good afternoon everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Bin here coming at you from really wet Batrun, Lebanon, a beautiful beach town located about a one hour drive north of Beirut. Today I'm gonna to take you to eat lots of delicious food, we're gonna hit up the Lemonade Museum and we're gonna see some of the historical sites. Nico, how you doing? Hey, we're starting from this yellow beautiful house, the Helmi's Lemonade. It's a lemonade museum. It's one of the oldest lemonade maker and uh, it's special in Batroun. You need to come here and try the lemonade. And this guy's right here. What's up guys? <laughs> <laughs> you, hey, you're harassing me. <laughs> Messing with you. <laughs> All right, so we go inside the other way? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's go inside. So this is the world's most iconic lemonade place, right? It's the yeah. only lemonade museum in the world. Yes. Wow, incredible. So, I mean, this is it, basically. This is the museum. Then the rest of it is, you know, a gift shop and where you can try the lemonade. Very nice. And when was this? When did they start this? 1888. 1888? Yeah. Helmi's. And it's three girls, right? Story goes, in 1888, the Helmi family were the first people to start basically selling lemonade in Batroun. 1888 was their first shop. 
Then over here we have Chess Helmy. So he started in 1962. He founded the Helmy brand. And then this museum was founded by the three granddaughters. So the three sisters, Rana, Farah, and Noor. So they opened this museum and the shop. Yeah. You know what, let's go try some. My friends, we're gonna have some lemonade. Okay. Yes? Yes. All right. Like they have mint lemonade, strawberry lemonade. They have some banana strawberry lemonade. No way, banana too? Yeah, and they also have lemonade with alcohol, like tequila. <laughs> Wow, so they mix it. So I'm trying the original. Helmi's, Helmi's lemonade. And it's more like a slushy, right? Oh, nice. A little sour, super cold. Obviously lots of ice. Mmm, this is very nice. So this is half frozen, half juice. It's pretty good. And if you want to, you can also get mint, red moon, Lebanese floor, on fire, on fire has tequila. On fire. I'm good with on fire. I put Arak. Arak. Yeah. I'm messing with you guys. Mmm. This is my favorite lemonades ever. It's amazing. So the price is 30000 so like $1.5? Yeah. My friend, merci. You're welcome. Oh yeah, we're very lucky. It stopped raining. It's clearing up. Hopefully it stays like this. Nice stone buildings. So these are all old houses. Beautiful stone buildings, like medieval architecture, right? Yeah, these are really old. The, the stones that were used to build this old town was actually picked from the sea. Hala will see, when we see the Phoenician wall, we'll understand what's, how did, did they break, break the stones to make these houses. Well, I mean, they're massive. They broke, broke them into pieces and so they can build the old town. So here they're renovating all the houses, right? Some of them are really modern. So you can see like this one, a few different restaurants, and you have older buildings, but all renovated. Not the best time to come. Winter in Batrun, don't suggest it. A lot of places are closed. Most of the restaurants are closed, but some things will be open, right? However, small shops may be closed now. It's at Stefan Church. It's built and designed by an Italian architect and a lot of uh, people here are named Stefan because because of this church and next up we have the port right in front of us small port a few boats most of them are out of the water yeah they're bringing fish from over there yeah this school here in Batroun before the port before they build this port the sea could reach up to up to this school so you imagine you were studying and you had the waves locking on your walls. Now they build the port and they brought, bring all the fish in the restaurants here from this port. So most men from Ratrun were either fishermen or sponge divers. As you can see over here, we have a lot of diver statues, right? Dedicated to the men from the area because a lot of them lost their lives at sea. And over here we have an oyster seafood bar. Let's go, let's go there. Which way? This lighthouse. Old lighthouse. A lighthouse. Wow. So now we're gonna cross over to the very end to see the Phoenician walls. Woo! Look at this. Oh, gotta be careful. Oh, super sharp. Don't come here with sandals. You get stuck. You're gonna hurt yourself. These are the same rocks they used to build the old houses in the town. Oh, same exact rocks. So right here we have the Phoenician walls. Unfortunately, they blocked it off, so you can't see it up close. You have to climb up to the town, to this church, and from here we're gonna get an epic view. The church that protects all the people who work at the sea. Here you get the Phoenician wall. Massive Phoenician wall. They said they they took out all the stone from here to the wall and they built an old town with it. So they kept this wall as a protection from all the enemy. So basically what we were standing on, they carved down and then they made a wall with it, right? So they used the rest of the stones to build all these houses. Wow, massive wall. It looks like I'd say four meters high, something like that, right? Yeah. And you know, you have the waves breaking on it right now, winter. Over here we have a few, a few people looking over, and this is the church. Church of Lady of Sea from 1863. And that was the Phoenician walls. Really beautiful, ancient, you have to see that. Now we're gonna walk through the old town to a beach. Basa Beach. Yeah, Basa means pebble. It's the, it's a small pebbles beach located in the middle of Petrun, where people usually come and tan bring some drinks. Again, this is a summer destination. 
and this is the beach. As you can see, lots of pebbles. But it's really high tide right now in winter. You have a few restaurants here. Cafes where you can have a coffee or a drink by the beach. Plenty of them here. Now only one is open. The one thing you guys gotta do when you come to Batroun is have a seafood sandwich. This is in the center of town. It's called George Maruf Seafood and Snack. They have calamar, they have raw fish sandwich, they have fish, they have uh, shrimps. Try the raw fish one. Raw fish it is, let's do it. It's called balamida. It's a uh, red uh, red meat uh, fish. It looks like, uh, like tuna. Yeah, it looks very similar to tuna. Yeah. Very nice. They have some soy sauce. Soy sauce, making it a little Japanese, huh? Yeah. That's it. So super simple. Yeah. Thank you, my friend. Merci. And I went with the raw fish. Okay. Mm-hmm. Basically sashimi. Mmm. Nice soy sauce. Peter bread. Not hot. Cold. Mmm. It's like a seafood wrap, right? Oh, it's very nice. So you can have many uh, seafood delicacies in a sandwich. So you got shrimp, octopus, squid, and then this raw fish. Amazing. Mmm. Mmm. Basically, sashimi in a sandwich. So I asked for spice and they gave me some chilies. All right? So I'm just gonna add a little bit there. Mmm. Mmm. Much better though. Yeah, much better like this. Not too spicy, just right. Mm-hmm. Mmm. -hmm. mm. Amazing. Mmm. Dude, I can eat one of these every day. Here on the beach, one of these, maybe two. One calamari. I'm gonna try the calamari. You try the calamari? Yeah, I'm gonna try the calamari. And what is he heating it up with there? Some sauce? Oh, so he's heating up the calamari. Yeah. Nice. Oh, wow. Beautiful. The calamari. Mm. Lime juice, coriander, and olive oil, plus salt. Mm -hmm. Some zatar. Nice. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh, extra more. Oh, yeah, you're gonna toast it. Nice. Nice. So he chops it up in, into like four pieces, yeah. right? Okay, so this is easier to share. Chokran, merci. This is you, bro. Give manja, me, manja. Give me my calamari. Mm. Wow, look at that, guys. Beautiful. That looks tasty. Mm. Super tasty. Mm. And it's spicy? Yes. I feel like I should have got this one first. <laughs> it's my jam. Mm hmm. Calamari with spices. Yep. Mmm. Mm. Like the sea. That's when you know it's fresh. Mm. Mm -hmm. Fresh from the seas. Habhe Akhtar. Zatar. This is the spice. With the hot calamari. And all the ingredients inside. Plus, I like how they made it a little crispy. They heated up the, the wrap, right? The pita. So I'm gonna keep that last piece for later. So it's 100 total, right? So 100 is like five US dollars. Merci. Merci, thank you so much. Appreciate it. I had no idea there was a brewery here in Lebanon. Let's go, it's gonna be good. I need a good ale. <laughs> Craft beer in Lebanon plus gin and vodka. Hello. Hello. Dude, it's raining too much. It's What's up, man? Much. David. How are you? Doing good? Pleasure, man. Let's do this. Yeah, so Jamil, so tell me about your brewery and what do you guys do here? Vodka, white rum, and Ara. Of course, Ara, it's our local uh, 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 alcohol. Mm -hmm. So it's made from uh, alcohol coming from grapes. And uh, I had with anise. Anise, it's a botanical ingredient, you know it. Mm -hmm. So we mix them together in the distillery to make our uh, ara. And ara goes very, very well with our cuisine. So people, when they eat like lunch Lebanese cuisine, uh, ara goes very well, especially with the meat and the fish. So this is the main building in the brewery, right? They brew the beer, but they also distill the gin, the vodka, and the ara. Yep. Eight years ago, when I opened the brewery, 
And when I started with the beer, the main idea was to give an identity and create uh, an experience at Colonel. So this is how I brought together uh, the sports that I love to the concept and also the eco-friendly aspects. So the roof you see here, this is all made from recycled plastic bags and all the wood in the structure is made from uh, shipping wood pallets. And also all the machines that we boil with all are made with condensers, we collect water and we, uh, we, repl like we plant all the plants uh, all over the concept that you see outside. As well, also we are, I'm, I'm on the way, hopefully, to make the brewery a zero waste brewery. We saw the brewery, now let's go try some beers. Yep. Wow, look at these boards. They have lawn boards here, and the bar is by the water. Let's get there. We got that juice. Hello. Hi. All right. Beautiful. My friend, cheers, 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 cheers. cheers, 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 cheers. cheers. And this is the unfiltered lager. Smooth. Mmm, ice cold. I love it. For me, unfiltered, way better. Always. Always, right? Cheers. Here, one more time, my man. Thank you so much. See, with the lagers, you can just drink it all day. All brewers like lagers because they can continue, right? With the ales, it gets a little tough. Yes. A bit more tough. A bit more tough. Next up, we're going to do the passion fruit beer. So the passion fruit beer is basically the lager, but they put passion fruit syrup on top. Okay? That's unique. It's different. I love it. Passion fruit lager. Mmm. Nice. Yeah. It's very nice. <laughs> Summerish. <laughs> Summerish, exactly. I mean, with the, you know, with the sun, with the beach, out there having some fish, this would be great. Yeah. Dude, I'm dreaming of it. So I have to come back here, what, July? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Enough of the beer. Let's have a little bit of vodka. <laughs> wow. So this is their vodka mm. with a little twist, right? Mm-hmm. You know what I love about the gin? The smell. Botanicals. Yeah, botanicals, right? So many botanicals. Feels very herbal. Ten different Lebanese botanicals. I wanted to give it an identity, Lebanese identity. So got that gin. I, after like a search and ex like experience and searching what can we use from our botanical ingredients, I picked ten local botanical ingredients. If you live in Batroun, you'll be happy. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you, this is probably my favorite gin ever. It's this amazing. Is, this is my favorite gin. So juniper is what makes gin, but then they added so many different things. You got coriander, cardamom, you got lemon, verana, fennel seeds, lavender, mint, lemon. So good. Mm. And the final thing to try is Arak. This ara is a real Lebanese ara, handmade Lebanese ara. You can't really find it. It's like you're making it at home with 100% alcohol from grapes and 100% fresh anise. This is our ara. We call it. I love ara. To be honest, this is one of my favorite drinks ever. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Good here. So Amazing. milky, wow. delicious. Oh wow, this is super smooth. Mm. Mm -hmm. Not strong. Mm. And then if you want, you can buy it in the liter. Wow, what a beautiful bottle. Look at that, I love this guy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this guy right here. <laughs> It's good. It's like amazing, Arak. I love Colonel. Colonel, the Colonel. Colonel Brewery, incredible, right here on the beach. They also have food, so we're staying for dinner, having some drinks, relaxing. It's a really rainy day. So we're just gonna chill, hang out. We went to the Airbnb nearby, so it's very, very convenient for us. All right, we're going inside. Rita, take me to the back. How <laughs> you guys doing? Good? So what are we doing tonight? Everything. Okay, so you're having mutapad, fish kippe, uh, shrimp rolls, dajan, and uh, that's it, I think. Okay. And uh, I hear the rain. The rain <laughs> is intense today. It's been a super wet day. 
and that's the fried seafood platter or combo, right? Right. Sporty like a doctor. Mm. It smells so good. Just butter, oil, and shrimp. But now he's gonna add some lemon zest, right? Yeah. Lemon. This is Lebanese cuisine. Always some lemon. Oh, it's heaven, guys. The garlic hits you. Oh, so pungent. It's like so good. I mean, it's like smoking here. <laughs> Next up, the fish. No, the tajin. What's the tajin? It's a uh, fish with cooked with uh, tahini, garlic, uh, what's the onion, and I think that's it. Like a fish, um, fish taj. A fish taj. Yeah, but I, for me, it's like more like a fish dip, you know? Yeah. It's not cooked with the bread. No, no, no of course. That's yeah. what I'm saying. It's like almost like a fish dip. Yeah. Taj. Taj. Oh my gosh, it looks amazing. Super hot. Delicious. Super delicious. Yes, sir. Let's do it. You're welcome. My man, my man. Bam. Bam. Let's go. Let's go. I'm hungry. I'm starving, man. Me too. <laughs> Get out of you. <laughs> All right, guys. We are ready to go. This is going to be amazing. We just saw how they made four different things. Well, this is a platter. Over here, we have the garlic shrimp. Just amazing. The lionfish um, with cream. Tahini. Tahini. Mm. Tahini. <laughs> <laughs> and then this one is the, the eggplant, right? Yeah, garlic, uh, lemon juice. The eggplant actually is great. Uh, is, uh, you know, they grill it mm -hmm. and then they mix it with tahini. Yeah, they puree it basically, right? Yeah, like a mutabal. I think we should start with one of these, right? Yeah. Wow. Hmm. Okay. The calamari, maybe. The calamari. And we have four different dips. Yeah. Whatever you want, man. You go with a sweet one. Yeah, the sweet and sour, right? Mm. Sweet, sweet chili. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. The chili is amazing. Chili is amazing. Not too fried. Mm. Fresh calamari. The water is right there. Mm hmm. Mm. Mm. Well, I'll keep going, but you know I want to try this one. I've never had seafood or fish kibbeh in my life until I got to Lebanon. Perfect. Mmm. What I love about this is that if you are here drinking, this is straight up bar food. Fried with drink. Perfect. Oh. Wow. Wow. I'm trying this one next. Shrimp. Shrimp. Mm -hmm. That is shrimp. I mean, which one? This one, tartar sauce? Yeah. Sweet chili. Or sweet chili. Is this tartar? No, it's like a mayo. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. Mm. Wow. Nice and crunchy. Yep. That's amazing. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Sweet chili sauce every day. Whoa. I feel good. The shrimp rolls? Shrimp rolls. Shrimp rolls right here. So basically just dough and shrimp. And just dip into one of these. Yep. Which one? Maybe yeah. barbecue? Barbecue good. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, love it. Lightly fried, got onions in there. Barbecue sauce is amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm. Love it, barbecue, huh? Savory. Savory umami. Wow. Zesty. <laughs> My boy, he doesn't stop. He's a hungry hippo. Mmm. <laughs> Last one. So much garlic. So good. Right, My turn, guys. Just toss it in right like that. Got a big chunk. Lionfish. Mmm. I love lionfish. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Again, the lemon. The lemon, the pita, mm. the almonds. Everything. Combination. Everything. Textures, flavors. This is lemon. This is lemon right here. Mm. 
the last thing we were trying is the thing we started to search at first. <laughs> yeah, you, you start with this one. You oh. start with the dips. Oh, bro. I beat you to the it. The mutabal or baba ganoush. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's not baba ganoush. That's mutabal. Who cares? Just eat. I mean, wow. There's a slight difference between them. Slight difference, right? No, oh, last bite. This is filling me up. Mm. That's Patroon. Yeah. That's my name, Museum. Phoenician Walls. Old Town. Old Town. Seafood sandwiches. Seafood maize. Mm hmm. Bars. Uh, brewery. Brewery. Gin. Beer. You have to come out here. We're only one hour north of Beirut. Come in June, July. This is a different place. Totally different. We'll have a party right downstairs. In June, July. Another video. Thumbs up. Comment below. Subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere in Tripoli. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> oh, man. Rita, call my Uber. Good morning everyone, I hope you're all doing well. This is David Hoffman from David's Bin here, coming at you from beautiful Tripoli, Lebanon, the second largest city in the country. It's also the northernmost city. Today I'm gonna to take you to explore the historical aspect and eat lots of food. We're gonna have some sweets, we're gonna have some kake, we're gonna have some sandwiches. I'm super excited. We're starting <laughs> off with the Palace of Sweets, we call it. Palace dating to 1881, started by Abdelrahman Hallam and now his sons. They make some of the best sweets in the country. They are the most famous branch. And they have mostly very good ashta cream. So all the sweets with ashta cream, you, you get them here. So they also have ashta cream kenefe, right? Yeah. Look how many sweets they got. They got cakes, they have cookies, so many good things. Oh wow, what is all this? Hello, sir. How are you doing, good? I am, yes. <laughs> this is kenefe with ashta cream, so it's a little creamier. Obviously, it's not just cheese, it's straight cream. Wow, this one looks awesome. The pistachio one looks nice, amazing, like triple layers, right? So you have a layer of pistachio, ashley cream, another layer of pistachios, and then crushed pistachios on top. So we got invited to the back? Yeah. Okay. Look at this, in the factory. Wow, hello, hello. Hello. Special VIP access here. It's amazing. Dude, this, this is Mahmoud. This is Mahmoud. Mahmoud, yes. Special Wow. It's, we call it halal to jibben or the sweet uh, cheese, uh, sweet cheese. They like add a lot of syrups to the cheese. Wow, look at that guys, beautiful. Super thin dough. Wow, so this is super thin dough, huh? With ashta cream. So it's a very long sheet, right? He folds it. He makes it like almost into like a cross, right? Mm-hmm. It reminds me of the, the shape of some of the baklavas, right? And then he's gonna fry this. He's gonna put this whole thing in the fryer. So he fried it, he colored it, then he threw it in the sugar syrup, and then he pushed it down, right? He pressed it to the bottom, and they're basically soaking up that sugar syrup. It's gonna be nice and sweet, a little like, crumbly, very crispy because the frying, and then the cheese inside, or the cream, is gonna like literally just crumble out. Oh, I can't wait for this one. So after they're done, he puts them on this big tray, and they're ready to be served. My turn, guys. Is it too hot? Not so bad. Okay. Oh. Oh, mmm, <laughs> mmm. Mm. Uh -huh. It's like a super sweet egg roll. Mm -hmm. But nothing inside but cream. <laughs> yalla, yalla, yalla. <laughs> Merci, chokran. One experience here in the back. Super quick, but so good. Oh, the ashta cream. Ashta cream all day. Yeah, I love ashta. We're trying anything else? Can yeah. Kenefe with ashta cream? Yeah. Let's do it, let's do it. That was also uh, the sweet cheese uh, but, with ashta cream. And what do you have? Pistachios and then? Yeah, a bit of pistachio and uh, rose uh, flower uh, jam. I guess we're gonna try some of that too. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna try the pistachio one. We're also gonna try the kenefe with ashta cream and, and the mamoul. Beautiful presentation, love it. 
All right, to the table. Let's go. I cannot wait to try the canepa with Ashta cream. That looks way better than the cheesy one. Oh, it's just creamier, right? Love this place. Yeah, let's get the one right over there. This is a pistachio. We call it mafrukit, uh, mafrukit fisto, which means the pistachio are made into a small dough with syrup and they add ashta below it. The same knefe, semolina dough with ashta and ma'amul dough with ashta. You go in, pick up, you pick up this, you go in with the syrup. Okay, I'm gonna try the same one, the pistachio. Oh my God, nice and dense, but then also very fluffy, right? Like a little pillow. Ooh. Gonna add some more, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. Mmm! Mmm! Pistachio! So fluffy and creamy. Amazing! And the rose syrup is hot. Mm hmm. Gosh, that cream of canefe, and now you just add that rose syrup. Oh, wow. Dude, it's just so fluffy. Gosh, that cream. Mm hmm. Mm, so decadent. Oh, the salmonina dough. Nice and like crispy on top. And then it's like super pillowy, right? It's fluffy. Mmm. Mmm. So good. So decadent for breakfast, huh? Yeah. Let's do this. Mamur with pasta cream. Mmm. Mmm. I think this is the best one for me of these three. Mm. Super soft, crumbly, pistachio with the Asher cream mixed with the rose syrup. Wow. This place, must visit. I'm in Tripoli, straight here. Amazing. So this is also part of the palace. You can sit in the court here. You can sit here inside this beautiful house. You can buy chocolate, you can buy even savory items like fava beans, chickpeas, they have everything. It's really a palace of sweets and everything. Oh. And this is beautiful. So you have two different sections to eat right down there below where we just were right in front where you order. Obviously you can see them doing all the canefe behind them, all the sweets. You can see here as well, this is more like a cafe, smaller tables and they have chocolates everywhere. I love it, man. It's a palace. This is Mr. Adnan Halab. Hello, hello, David. Pleasure. How are you? Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You are welcome. How did you find our shop? I loved it. I loved it. Really? Loved it. I'm full. <laughs> <laughs> it's too good. The canefe, man. The canefe. Uh, Asha cream all day. Uh, so we're going back into the factory to see how they make the dough. The cheese. The cheese. The cheese one. The halal tajibah. The halal tajibah. Hello, hello. How are David, you? pleasure. Nice to meet nice, you. Nice to meet you too. How are you? Good? Yes. yes. So we're doing halal to shibin. Uh, halal to shibin in English, it's a sweetness of the cheese. It's a mixture between uh, semolina, uh, green cheese, and the flour water. The process is uh, really uh, pure handmade. You need to feel the cheese while doing it. And uh, it's really interesting. Now we're going to see it uh, with the chef that he's going to do. And it's amazing. So it's basically cheese mixed with semolina dough. They stretch it out. They make it super you know, thin. Then he stretches it even more he adds sugar syrup I mean the whole process is amazing so that is a cheesy dough that's super sweet boom, boom. you're too much you're too much be the man Bye. come here <laughs> to the house of sweets the palace of sweets that's it fortress time yep. let's go oh what a beautiful day Nice and sunny, super nice people. Yeah. It was great. I got the belly filled now. <laughs> My belly is full. Yeah, yeah. Too full. <laughs> After a five minute drive, we made it here to the center of Tripoli where the fortress is. Look at that beautiful porch to the left. And over here around us, we have mini market, right? So lots of housing, market, lots of cars. Look, fruit and vegetable vendors. Oh man, to get to this fortress, a lot of steps. Going straight uphill. Ooh. A little cold up here too, right? Sunny, cold. Yeah. Feeling good? Feeling better. We made it to the top, to the castle of Tripoli. Look at this, beautiful structure, huge. It was uh, one of the crusaders. His name was saint Gilles in the 12th century. Many believe that this is his construction. However, it, com it got completely destroyed. Then the Ottomans built it again. 
Uh, and the proof is, you can see here from the door, this is a perfect Sarai looking uh, door that the Ottomans used to have, with the colors the Ottomans used to do. The bridge over the small river that was crossing here. Yeah, this is the moat. So they would fill this up with water so no one can cross in. Over here you can see little windows, those windows the guys would be defending, you know, with an arrow, you know, bow and arrow, just waiting for somebody to come, shoot. And over here, <clears throat> look at this beautiful doorway. So as you can see, right there we have the inscription of the Quran, you know, in Arabic, white and black bricks. Really beautiful, something different. I actually haven't seen this before in any castle. Something unique for me. Um, and yeah, so we're just gonna keep going through. So how much is it to enter? 10,000 for both of us, which is half a dollar. Chokran, <laughs> chokran. Wow, big castle, massive structure. Overlooking the entire city. Over here, as you can see, Few different stairways, and I'm guessing these are just like different rooms. One of the courts here, and inside you have the rooms. You're gonna now go to the roof area to have a beautiful view of the area here. So when you walk up here, you pass that little courtyard. Here you have a few different windows where you can see the city, right? So before that was just hills, right? So they had the river, hills, and they could always see if any invaders were coming. It's a great vantage point. Obviously, this is the reason why they built it on top of this rock. I haven't seen a fortress like this before where you have literally different layers that you can see from here. So you can see, here you go down, there's like all that defense area. Then you have the rooms and you keep going lower and lower and just gets deeper and deeper. And then over here, what well, we just have ruins of different houses, right? A lot of people always get this mixed up. What's the difference between a castle and a fortress? Well, castle people lived in it. Fortress was straight defense. It's a fortification, you're just defending the territory. Castle, people lived in it, and it also was a fortification as well. And this is a castle. That's why there's a lot of rooms. At the very top, we have a platform. We can overlook the entire city of Tripoli. So over there, we have the Mediterranean Sea. We have the city. Over here behind us, we have the mountains. What's over there? Mountains uh, of uh, Pshare and Cedars. They're right next, right in front of us. And the highest peak in the Middle East is just right above them, the Black Peak. And we have here the sea, and if you take a boat half, a, half an hour from the sea, you can find uh, our beautiful islands. We have some beautiful islands where you can swim. Oh, yeah? Clear water, yeah. And that's basically the fortress, right? Really beautiful. I mean, the views from up here are incredible. What a great day. Very sunny, lots of buildings. You have all these mixes, a lot of mosques in the area. I mean, this is a beautiful city, dude. Yes. I love it. Let's go to the old souks. Old souks have now? some food, yeah. I'm hungry, let's go. Yep. Yala, yala. Now we're going to the old souks. They have a lot of uh, things there. Mainly they call them Khan. Khan means a shop. And they have Khan Sabun, where uh, one of the soap makers, they have... Uh, soap maker, wow. Yeah, Khan al Mujawharat. They sell jewelry, they sell soap. Food? They sell food, of course. This is an amazing souk. It feels like you're teleporting back 200 years to how the things used to be like. You know, small shops, everybody selling, you know, household goods, clothing, socks, scarves. You have some jewelry shops. You also have some street food here, some kake. So that's the bread. We're going to go to a famous place to eat it. We're not going to eat it out just off any guy here on the street. They have za'atar fresh. You want to try? Mm-hmm. That's za'atar. Mm -hmm. Open your mouth. Try the za'atar. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Wow, time. Mm. It's so good. I'm going to get it back for my, for my you, friends. You want? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to get it back. You're going to try something very yummy now. What is that? The mughrabiyye. Mughrabiyye is little uh, balls of dough. They add chickpeas, a bit of onions, fried onions. And here the speciality is they put them in a sandwich with some turnip pickles. Usually you have them in the, with a the spoon, but here they, they make them in a sandwich, so you can have it on the go. I mean, it looks very grainy, right? So you have these, like, these bondas. They, I mean, it looks like little balls, right? Plus the chickpeas, and then you got some onions. Cost 15000 for this sandwich. I cannot wait. It's going to be amazing. It's crunchy. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm. -hmm. mm, -hmm. mm. little dough balls. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mmm. Well, Nabiyum, you call them. Nabiyum. You have the pickle, the turnip, right? Mmm. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh wow. Very grainy this one. Mmm. Mmm. So right here is Aleppo. This is from Syria. This is Atar. Chokran, chokran. Let's go, let's go. Yala, yala. 
The reason I got that 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 is because you won't find it anywhere else. That comes from Syria. Obviously, I wanted to try a different one at home, so it's gonna be good. That with some olive oil and a sandwich, the best. All right, guys, I'm gonna try a pickle chili. Oh. Spicy. Strong. Strong. It's amazing. I would have that for lunch, the whole thing. Okay, guys, we're going in the back. What are we having here? We call it shank leash. Cheese with spices? Yeah, but here they made it with um, it looks red, so there's a lot of spices. Alright, I'm just gonna get a little bit. Mm hmm. Shank leash with, with chili. Oh, oh my god. It's a bit of olive oil. Mmm. Let me try. Get some. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so good. Mm. It's like nice. It's almost like crumbly cheese. Oh, is it goat cheese? Oh, oh, oh. Mm, some pepper. This is my favorite Lebanese cheese. Thanks, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wow. So now we enter the whole different section of the soup. Over here, you have um, you know fruit and vegetable vendors, but you also have some seafood vendors. What's up, guys? Fish vendors. <laughs> wow, this is amazing. Look at this. Oh, the good stuff. So basically he's selling strawberries by the kilo here. Wow, fresh yeah, ones. Look, look. Oh, look at this fresh one. Trablus, I'm a fair. Trablus. Mmm. Sweet. Oh, man. Oh, it's amazing, strawberry. I can't. I'm getting fed here too much. <laughs> this soup doesn't end. It just keeps going and going and going. When you think it ends, it continues. And now we're in the jewelry section. Look at this. Beautiful, gold everywhere. Hello, hello. Hello, welcome. How you doing? Everything good? Traditional oh, hammam. Cool. You have all the all the stuff you can do, sauna, massage. You can even have a coffee here. This hammam is over 840 years oh, old. Oh, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> I speak five languages. <laughs> It's getting hot in here. And During so the Mamluks area, they built this. During the Mamluks area. Yeah. Oh, fuck! <laughs> this guy. You got the guy, he was coming. Too much, too much. <laughs> you made my day, you made my day. So, if you guys never been to a Turkish battle, same thing, the hammam, right? So, you come in, he you get basically fully Masai. naked, and he'll give you a scrub. He'll take off yes. all the skin. Mm. And unfortunately, it's really steamy in here. That's why the camera lens has steamed up. <laughs> Super foggy, but oh. That was incredible. Please take some time. Come here for an hour. Get a bath. Get a massage. Oh, get a scrub. Bro, we didn't come here five hours earlier. <laughs> We should have came here for this. So we just exited the souk. What an incredible place. I mean, the experience there is a must when you come to Lebanon. Next up, we're going to have some kake. Yeah, some, some um, Tripoli kake. Tripoli kake. Yeah, they do it here, yeah. So famous place, right? Uh, many street vendors offer it. They basically put cheese on a round kake and they put some a bit of butter and they put it on charcoal. I mean, insane. It's taken us like 25 minutes just to get out of two intersections. Crazy. But we only have six more minutes and then we'll be at the Kake. Kake. Can't wait. Some good bread with some cheese. Cream cheese. After about a 20 minute drive, we made it to the square of the lions. The light. Of the light. And the light. Sorry, the light. <laughs> and right here we have the Kake. Yeah. Alright, guys. Let's jump on this. Nico, cheers. Cheers. Nice smoky, crispy bread. Mm -hmm. Still a little dough inside. I would say it reminds me of a super thin bagel. Mm. Mm. Wow, perfect. Love the black olives. Loving the kake. Mm, I waited for this one. Look at this. You have the olives, tomato, pepper, cacao cheese. Just post it up right here on the street. Mm -hmm. So good. Gravy. The cheese. I don't know what to tell you guys. It's amazing. Thirty total. Fifteen each, my friend. So good. Chokran. Guys, come to him. Amazing. Chokran. Ciao. Let's go. Let's go. So right now we're going to El Mina, which is next to the sea. This is basically a suburb of Tripoli and it's divided by the highway, which we just passed. 
and we're gonna have some chicken right now. Chicken on the street. Let's have some chicken. We're gonna have a walk and some chicken. This is Kalasina, one of the best chicken places in Tripoli. Uh, that's what we're gonna order? Rouge al Paham or chicken on charcoal. Wow. We eat it a lot in Lebanon. That's awesome. So they have it over here, like rotisserie chicken. And you can have it rotisserie or on charcoal. charcoal. I prefer charcoal. Yeah, charcoal's gonna be tastier, right? This is amazing. Thanks, my friend. All right, so just grab some of the bread, break up this. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, the amount of flesh in here. Mm -hmm. But then, you go in there, so meaty, garlicky. This chicken is incredible. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Mm. The garlic, super strong. Mm. Mm -hmm. Happy soup. Very strong. Oh. Uh, how you do, uh, how you do, how you do uh, that? How does that? Makes the garlic egg a bit uh, less strong. Perfect. Oh. Opa. Okay. Yeah, that's that's the key here, right? Eleven. Mm -hmm. Makes it better, huh? Eh? Mm-hmm. What a chicken, huh? Mm. Oh, that. All the meat. Oh, it's still hot. Let's go in here. Look at that. The amount of lemon. Mix with the oil, with that garlic. I'm just gonna try the fries with the garlic. Mmm! Nice. Oh, nice crispy fries. Salt pepper. Mm-hmm. Mmm! I mean, if you're not into garlic, is this overkill? I think it's pretty good, though. Homemade! This garlic sauce, very pasty. I think the oil and the lemon really, like, calmed it down. It's still very pungent. It's 140 for the chicken, around seven dollars, and the drinks and fries and all of that, an extra fifty. Thank you. Talk around, talk around. Thanks, man. And that is it, my friends. We did it. We explored Tripoli, the largest city in northern Lebanon, second largest in the country. What an experience! We did a non-stop adventure. We did the House of Sweets. We saw how so many sweets were made. We went. We saw the fortress, the souk. We saw the hammam. We tried kake, we tried chicken, and everybody was so friendly here. This is the city of generosity. So humble, so nice. Guys, if you ever get an opportunity to come out here, it's only like a two hour drive north of Beirut. That's where we're going right now. And yeah, that's Tripoli. I hope you enjoyed this adventure. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Beirut. Let's go.